Greetings dear friends, I present your attention to most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Chevrolet Captiva. The body of cars manufactured by GM Korea doesn't differ in a particularly durable paintwork, but even at the age of 10 there were no obvious problems with corrosion. The new GM standard affects the quality of protection of steel structures. What is needed here is galvanized and something else is covered with a thick layer of mastic and plastic. They forgot only about the fifth door, and some of the seams in the engine compartment may have damage to the sealant and traces of corrosion already at the age of several years. A clear minus is that the thickness of the metal of the outer panels is not impressive, they bend well with the finger. This is all the more strange because the weight of the car is more than one and a half hundred kilograms more than that of its main competitors. But according to the reviews of those who have visited the Captiva in serious accidents, the secret is revealed. The car has a very solid foundation, more reminiscent of the design of the side members of Sirius Crooks than a high light crossover. The noise isolation, adding weight, is also very high quality. Even the role model in this case, the RAEV4 of the second and third generations, turned out to be much noisier. However, the talents of the platform based Antara and SRX are even quieter, so the Captiva is still far from the limit of perfection. The electrical equipment on the body and interior is not completely problem free, although it doesn't present expensive troubles generally typical for GM cars. Worse, the underhood wiring and underbody electronics suffer quite a bit. The engine compartment bread is too gentle, sand that has got into the corrugations after several years of operation can cause numerous violations of the installation of wires and just as numerous failures in onboard systems, and mainly in the engine. After driving off-road, it is recommended to thoroughly rinse the engine compartment and generally keep it clean. By the way, Sweden motors create a lot of troubles. Traces of grease over time heavily pollute the compartment from below and allow the sand to linear inside. The wiring to the ABS sensors and the AWD clutch is also vulnerable. After forcing forward and serious puddles, it is recommended to check the tightness of the connectors or at least once every couple of years to put grease in them. Severely burned front optics, a leaky brake light on the rear door, poor wiring of the rear license plate lights are generally characteristic of all inexpensive cars. You should not take them as a serious flaw in the model. While there were no failures of the onboard multimedia system here simply because of its simplicity. Car suspensions for passenger cars can be considered exemplarily reliable and inexpensive moreover. They even withstand off-road trips without much damage, unless, of course, they are driven on the ground and pits in a loaded car. However, the reliability of the shock absorbers is below average. After 30-40 thousand mileage, they will lose efficiency and the car's handling will noticeably deteriorate. You can reach up to 100-150 thousand with a native kit. They will not flow if you do not overheat them, but the pleasure of driving is not the same. The stabilizer struts are consumable, just like the bushings. With an active movement style, they have to be changed at every second TO, if you do not want to listen to their knocking. By the way, its reason may be not only in the suspension. There is very delicate steering rack, which begins to knock at once over 50,000. But if you monitor the fluid level in the power steering expansion tank, it can work in this state for a very long time. Backlashes are minimal and leaks are usually almost invisible. The power steering pump is not very reliable, but pumps from Opel cars are perfect with manual alternation, although they do not beat by the code. This will come in handy if the owner of the car missed the ATP level in the tank, in the tank at least once, because the part doesn't di differ in reliability. The reliability of the transmissions can be generally assessed as average. Manual gearboxes generally do not cause any particular problems. You just need to monitor the oil level, because it is quite traditional for GM brake gearboxes to sweep with oil. The strength of the front CV joints and drives is sufficient, except that with 3.6 engine at a top diesel engine there are cases of cutting of the planes of the shafts. Most likely one of the drives was not very successful. At the same time, the hinges themselves are reliable, they can withstand even short work with the torn cover, but here it is important to notice all drips in time. The short covers themselves are too gentle, they break easily off-road. The same problem is with the propeller shaft on all-wheel drive versions, it usually fails the rubber intermediate support and after it the bearing. Theoretically, with such a breakdown, it is necessary to replace the propeller shaft entirely, but in fact there is a quad propeller shaft bearing with a dimension of 71.4 per 24.6, which can be found even on GIZ gas cars, and the repair insert for an elastic band can also be bought. It is more difficult to break the clutch, because it turns off at the slice attempt to overheat. The emergency mode starts already at 94 degrees. It doesn't have a separate ready radiator, as well as a complex hydraulic system. Failures are usually associated with the failure of the electronic of the control system, which entails the failure of the mechanical part. The rear gearbox is also quite gentle, it doesn't like gas to the floor, starts on the asphalt and sometimes fails with V6 engines. The type of, the type of automatic transmission and its reliability depend on the year of manufacture. 
Before Stalin, there was an Icing AW5551, known from Opel and Volvo cars. Captiva got the last revision of the box, which was mostly problem-free. With a calm driving style and a serviceable engine cooling system, it has a chance of 150 to 100,000 mileage without much hassle. With active pedaling, more frequent oil changes will be needed, at least once every 40,000 km, and replacement of the gas turbine engine linings at the first signs of wear. After installing in 2011, a new six stage of GM's own production of the 6T45 6040 series was delivered. Unlike the Japanese automatic transmission, it turned out to be more twitchy, more prone to overheating, with an even smaller resource of the gas turbine engine and serious problems with the liners of the box itself. In addition, in the early years of production, there were enough child problems with the valve body and the cooling system was left the same, which was clearly not enough in the new box. As a result, the restyled cars have ever chanced getting into the box service earlier than the pre restyled There are often cases of failure during the warranty period with very low mileage. True, the box is a little easier for minor repairs, they are cheaper. But if the bushings are damaged, an extremely costly operation will have to be done. It is often easier to change the box assembly. One of the great advantages of cars before installing is, oddly enough, the weakest 2.4 engine. After all, this is an old Opel model engine, only with a very clamped firmware and bored out to a volume of 2.4. The motor itself is extremely reliable, it has the cast iron block that is resistant to overheating and other troubles, a strong piston group, a simple control system and inexpensive piping. For those who lack 136 strength, there are many tuning developments, ranging from shafts from X20 XER and X22 XE engines to a red top cylinder head with a C20 XE with a serious rework and even installing a turbocharger. In addition, consumable for it can be found in almost any village, and mechanics know it because this series of engines has been produced for a good 20 years. The newer 2.4 motor is also familiar to all Opel drivers, those who have seen motors of the Z22 SE series for example. This is a more modern design with a timing chain and a balancer shaft in the block, and at the same time without repair dimensions, with an unpredictable timing resource, expensive parts and other delights of motor motors. But in general, the engine is very resourceful and moreover much more powerful in stock. Particular attention should be paid to timing resource. It is the main supplier of problems here. If something rains on a cold one, then it would be better to immediately find 40-60 thousand troubles to replace the entire set. Otherwise, it can pull out the weak paints of the tensioners or dampers. Grind the front cover and in specially severe cases, the timing phases are violated or the chin simply breaks off. There are ceramic veil guides in the vlog head, so you can't get away with a little blood. Most likely you will need an expensive repair or replacement. Unfortunately, it is impossible to say when the thunder will strike, usually the chains are all 120-150 thousand. This of course is not much, but by modern standards it's quite a decent result. However, sometimes problems start already at 40-60 thousand mileage. Fortunately, the craftsmen are familiar with these problems from the structurally similar Opel engines, and there are ways to make repair cheaper moreover, avoiding the repair repetition of problems in the future. Rare V6 engines are also familiar from Opel and GM cars. Engines of 3.2 and 3.6 liters are relatives for Opel Vectra 2.8T and Alfa Romeo 3.2. These highly reliable motors have several weak points. Firstly, the resource of the timing chain is limited here. It is unlikely to travel more than 150,000 km. Moreover, the cost of two circuits and four phase shifters is comparable to the price of a contract motor. Secondly, most motors are prone to overheating and the slice contamination of the radiators or the failure of one of the fans immediately takes the temperature into the red zone. After that, the engine almost always requires a good oil appetite, which can only be defeated by a bulkhead. And the ignition modules fail even if there is not much overheating, just an increase in the temperature in the engine compartment due to the installation of the crankcase protection may be enough for the replacement of the MH to become regular. By the way, a feature of cars with V6 before stalling is also a very expensive exhaust system with a valve that turns off the left muffler at partial loads. Therefore, the left one turns out to be twice as expensive as the right one, all 23,000 troubles. Starting in 2010, the system of questionable efficiency was removed, and the mufflers are again the same. By the way, the designation of the motor according to Opel catalog Z32SE is misleading. It differs very much from the motor with the same name on the Vector C. For example, the vector timing belt has a belt and the block is comparatively a bit different. Try not to flaunt your knowledge of the motor model in front of sellers and choose spare parts carefully. The 3.0 engine is a newer series, it has direct injection, a more reliable timing and a very successful injection pump. It's just too early to talk about any serious problems, they didn't have time to repair, but many owners noted a decent oil appetite and the same tendency to overheat the slightest hint of contamination and the cooling system. An oil change interval 
of no more than 10,000 km is highly recommended for all gas and engines. Well, except for the cold old 2.4 136 horsepower, it is not so critical. And the native Dexos 2 5W30 oil is also not the best choice. The 6 engines SAE50 oil is generally recommended, and regular SAE40 is sufficient for inline force. By the way, the resource of the timing chain, according to some reviews, strongly depends on the oil and its level. Diesel engines 2.0 on cars before installing didn't cause any particular complaints from the owners, despite the fact that they arrived in Russia only after a run across Europe. Such cars were not officially sold with us. Due to the small amount of serious statistics on them, there are no complaints except that there were complaints about the not very large resource of nozzles, sensitivity to bad diesel fuel and the resource of the timing belt in our conditions is more than 60,000 km. More powerful 2.2 diesels are just too new for serious breakdowns. In addition to typical diesel problems with fuel equipment, there were almost no other complaints, except that the automatic transmission paired with the most powerful engines with a torque of 400 nm is hard. These are cases of box failure during the warranty period. On this information about the problems of Chevrolet Captiva is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.